Hey everyone, and welcome back to what's gonna be the day where we finally get a dinosaur in Dino Park. Let us look on the wildlife map for candidates, shall we? Geostern Bergia. Hello? You're a pretty fancy looking creature. So we got that guy. The pterodon over here. This guy is a murderer. Look at this. This thing is the most vicious creature I've ever seen in my life. All right. Well, that's definitely candidate El Numero Uno. We got the Albertosaurus. I would like to get him for sure, but we're going to need to get a little bit more healed before we try to take him on. The base opsis over here. Well, uh, he seems to be kind of a couple. Oh, boy. Can I say that on YouTube? Is my series over, friends? I have to remember to go back and edit that out, to be totally honest. Uh, in any event, Komodo, Basophilus, Rhinoceros. That's it. We don't have too many dinosaurs on the map right now. I think I like that uh, Pterodon. This guy is an absolute murderer, literally. He's been ripping apart all of my Diplocolises. And you know what? Since I wanted at least two of them, I guess we're going to have to settle for one of these little guys. Let's take a look at him. Juvenile male. He's not even grown up yet. Are you kidding me? Revenge chance on tame, only 10%. Amazing. What the heck? Okay. Only 10%. Yoink, let's get him in. I'll just do that whenever the opportunity presents itself. In fact, I might go start by doing that. Oh, we... And wait. There we go. I, for whatever reason, the inter interface to um, tame it just didn't show up the first time. And then it said, could not mount, not fully grown yet. Look at this ridiculous creature. It's so big, it just murdered its little brother for fun, I think. How long is this uh, wood going to last out here? It's going to last a fun, a, or plenty of time. All these ferns growing is a little... Un you know what, I might have to cut those ferns out, frankly. What do these bushes give for cover? Cover effectiveness 20? It's just going to take, well... It's not that much time, actually, to keep that stuff all trimmed. Let's see how this works out. It's good that Zavori is over here in case this goes horrifically awry. Can I tame the Pterodon with insect meat? <gasps> Friends, we have done it! We have our first dinosaur! A Pterodon, the most vicious creature in all the lands! Fantastic! Let's get him into the Dino Phallus tank area. Amazing! Now, how are we going to feed him? Is this something I haven't really worked out yet? I was thinking maybe of just having like a ton of little critters that spawn fast and all the dinosaurs could rip them apart and that'd be super fun. Uh, or that might be not even remotely possible. Uh, the visitors could come in, but eventually I think the visitors would realize what's going on. Or the last option is that there's something in here. I don't know where it is exactly. Um, I think it's actually way up here on the top. There it is. Uh, automatic feeders. So we could research that coming through this. Missing high-tech research bench? Oh. So we are really... Uh-oh. What's going on now? Self-harm Zavoria? What? I guess she's just mad. She wants to make a statement and let everyone know how mad she is. She's so, so much in pain. <laughs> Maybe she just loves the pain. Who knows? Hard to say with her sometimes, to be honest. She's done that like 700 times now in this game. And every time it hasn't really been serious. I mean, it's definitely no Courtney, that's for sure. Courtney was such a legend. In any event, um, what's, what else is on the list today besides? I can't believe we actually got a little bird. Look, he's over here sleeping in the stupidest place. Should we build him a aviary? No, I don't know how these how this works exactly. So steel small. What is cool though is that Serpy added these things: slate bathroom doors. I was looking at this just before. This is a bathroom door, and I have a bathroom. Let's put it in, actually. Boom, boom. It's ten slate blocks. We have enough. They're all right there. I'm actually really curious to see how that looks. Just a little bit more thematic. I always felt that these doors just looked really stupid, and I bet these ones are gonna look beautiful. But anyway, back here to the aviary now. The small dome. I honestly don't understand quite how it works. Looks like there's four tiles of fences. Is that supposed to be on the outside, or is it supposed to be bordering it exactly? I th think... I don't really know. Ooh, a slate glass door. Yeah, I put that one earlier, too. I was just curious what it looks like. What is a steel one? Hmm. Glass door, you say? Let's actually try it up here into the visitor's room just to see what it looks like. Curious. So strange. Slate glass, but whatever. 
We'll put those two things on, and then I'll think about the aviary. The weird thing about it is that it only takes two steel. I think we might need to put an actual... You know what I need to do here? Let's take a look at the path. And then why don't we think about putting it, like, right in the middle? Like, right there it could be a really cool place for it. Right here where everyone first comes in and they see this. We could leave, like, a couple of spaces around it. So, oh, actually, yes, this would work out fantastic. Let's put it in. Tetradon 1 is fully healed. Let's see if we can't put in Dome Fence Front. I'm thinking of doing something like this. All right, now, I think that's sort of how it goes, but I'm not 100% sure. We'll put the whole thing in. We got Slate Front, Slate Back, and then we got the walls. It, it doesn't... It's not completely 100% clear to me. Uh, but I guess once it's put together, we'll have some idea. And then we can actually make a little sleeping nest in there. We can move some stuff around, make it a cooler environment maybe. Even plant a few things here and there. And we'll see how it works out for us. So that's going to be a thing number one. And number two, I'm really curious how much steel we're getting up to here. Let's check the map. We're up to 241. That is nowhere near enough. Ooh, Tran Bustle over here. Are you helping us out with the seat? No, you're just hauling stuff for us. Well, let's get rid of this um, planning mod for a second. So one thing I want to do, I guess we'll just finish working on the researches over here for the the new like hygiene, hygiene style of coolers before I decide on whether or not I didn't want to do the old coolers or the new coolers. But otherwise, I really want to start working on the path. In here. That's a very important thing to me. So let's turn this back on. Let's go for Jurassic. And then it says over here, paved floor. Tan colored round slabs laid out in an interlocking pattern. All right. Well, unfortunately, they're five steel a piece, which is going to be a lot of steel to put that thing in. But, ooh, how do these doors look? Well, we're about to see in two seconds. A little scatterbrain to this episode, it feels like. Ooh, I like them. They don't match at all with the bamboo. But I like them. I wonder if you can make bamboo ones. No, I think they're only made out of stone. They could be wood and have the bamboo. Oh, that would look unbelievably beautiful. In any event, should I lay out this steel paved floor here on the path? Probably not, because we really need to work on coolers first, unfortunately, as much as I want to do it. Here comes Slarcy now on the glass door. Hmm, that actually looks pretty good. I like that a lot. It's really fancy looking. I'm curious what this is going to look like when it all gets done. Sluttercy's working on the fence in the front. Strain. Wow, that got put together fast. I put a double door in because I kind of assume that's how it's supposed to go, but I, I really don't know, to be honest. It's only. Oh, oh there we go. Caravan request. It's only two steel for the actual dome, so we'll see in a second. What do they want? They want 820 bamboo. They'll give us an anti-green warhead. Well, that could be a great trade, actually. Something I might want to think about doing, although I can't really launch it. There it is. So now we have our dome. I don't know if I have it set up correctly. Well, it has taken me quite a bit of a while to figure out how this um, aviary works, but I think I've got the whole thing set up here. I got a little water patch coming in. The actual aviary is here. We got double doors that go into the front. We got the steel fences on the other side. These ones I needed to move because I had misplaced them. I've got a giant evergreen tree going in, a bunch of slate rocks there and there. I think it's going to be really cool. We got a pineapple tree in there, a berry bush in there. It might be cool. I don't know. We'll see. And then a little pterodon in. I wonder if this could be just like slightly more transparent. Because you almost can't see the guy. He like blends right in perfectly. But it's it's coming along. We got one so far. The other thing I really wanted to do with these ants. Well, I kind of wanted to like not have them be tamed. But what I realized with the Avery thing is it doesn't actually fence them in as far as I can tell. Actually, it might do that once these sides are in. I think the, the actual dome is that people can just walk right through it like it wasn't even there. So yeah, I think they actually will be fenced in. So once that's done on the training here, we can shut off the tameness and just allow the pterodon to go wild. Although then I'm wondering how it's going to eat. So I don't know, maybe we'll just leave it as it is for now. The base is looking absolutely beautiful here. It's December 1st in the early, early morning at 5 o'clock. 
Donkey's helping us out with the smoke leaf. This weird crab has been in here forever. He's still in there. Mango and Cinnamon are getting a very early rice picking. Adventure over here. Everything's just coming along fantastic. Moods are off the charts high. Uh-oh. No oh, Zavoria asked Iguatambi to join. Iguatambi has accepted and has joined the community. Welcome. Oh, look at the little thing. He's so happy. Welcome, Iguatambi. Let me take a look over here. Um, you were a miner and a shooter. Fascinating. Now, on the name list here, I actually don't have the next male name random up from the list, so I'm going to have to do that after this episode. But yeah, definitely mining, shooting, and art if we wanted to do art. Uh, you know what? I would kind of like to do a little bit of art. Not sure exactly. Ooh, ornate plant pot, you say. All right, let's start making some ornate plant pots. I kind of want to make these guys out of... Ooh, we can make them out of amber. We could go mine ornate things with this guy. Uh, we'll go mine like amber and make like amber plant. That would be really cool. All right, let's keep that in mind. Uh, for now, I'm going to shut that off, though. Let's have a few things set up for him to go mine. We're going to come over here. I'm going to grab this whole thing, all this gold, and just hit mine. Now, Iguatambi's going to need to copy his profile from someone with a mostly similar setup. I'm going to probably copy myself. Paste it in there. Let's get his wardening is good because he's just helping out feed everybody. His animal handling is going to be completely zero. Mostly what we want this guy to do. We're not going to have him construct anything, even though he's got a six. Uh, we're just going to have him mine. And basically art after mine. And that's going to come before hauling and cleaning. That's the only two things he's going to do. Now, because we have a dedicated miner who's very passionate about it, we can bump mining back on everyone else to an eight. Uh, so it only happens essentially after cleaning. Whoops, that's plant cutting there that I just messed up. It was mining over there. There we go. Beautiful. All right. Well, we now have eight colonists, and I believe he should have a room. We have Chaos, Rhino, Sluttersea. No, we do not have a room, so we're going to have to take this one and set it off for prisoners at long last. We'll have to make use of that. Now, that means we need to link the bed over here with all of these uh, fixtures so that random people don't come in and start using them. We already did that with these ones over there. And that's looking good. Absolutely wonderful. Ooh, look, we got the water in there next to the grass. We got a stone, a giant evergreen tree. I like it. Oh, God, that just looks like a... Well, once all this wood gets out of there, that's going to look like a real place, sort of. Poor little pterodon in there. Can't go nowhere. Should we name him or no? What do you guys think? If so, what name? Very excited about this. What's the next one? Oh, the Geo Sternbergio. There's two of them now on the map. I wonder if I want to put both of them in there and see who wins. Probably not. And also the Albert Albertosaurus over here. Let's see if Zavoria is ready. Pretty close. Chaos, you ready too? Pretty close. I think now's the time, friends. Let's go after him. 80% chance of revenge on Tame Fail. Let's have me... Whatever, there we go. Whatever reason, it doesn't give you the option to, to see it the first couple of times. Let's bring Cinnamon up here in case of failure. Zavoria. It's like a real effort to get these guys. Let's get Rhino up there as well. We're interrupting a lot of the other stuff we're doing, but, you know, priorities. This is a priority. I would love to get this guy in there with, like, a legion of otters or something. Oh, boy. Oh, they really enjoyed their stay. 89. Donkey enjoyed her stay. Wow. Left me Tyrannosaurus leather times 11. And Balkal or whatever left herbal med. Thank you, guys. Look at these beautiful cherry trees, too. Chaos is fully healed. Perfect timing. Everyone's ready, and here we go. Oh, God, this is potentially bad. Let's get ready. Chaos, get close. Zavoria, get close. And we know how this can go. Come on, friend. Come on. Everyone's very happy about this. They shouldn't be. Zavoria's smiling, having a chat with Chaos. Chaos doesn't seem to care one way or the other. Slaughter Sea's fully healed now. Team failed 20%. And amazingly, amazingly, he didn't revenge. Because we had an 80% chance for him to revenge. Wait a minute. Why are we still talking to him? Oh, I'm just done. 
There's a little puddle of rain, too. All right, well, we'll give that a whirl and maybe the next day, and hopefully that's going to take a lot of days. Oh, little monkeys are here. Slate, your family has arrived. Only to get chomped up by this Geostern Bergia, I'm sure. Ah, uh, I've noticed something here. Uh, so in our freezer, we don't have tea leaves turned on. And I bet we also don't have coffee. Coffee beans. Yep, there we go. So that should pull those out of this area. Swells in 14 days. Let's haul those a little bit more urgently. Same deal on the tea. Fantastic. I've also noticed that apparently they stack higher than 25. Now, I don't know what they go up to, but they're going to go up to at least... 50 so we're gonna bump this up to 100 hoping to fill this up and one of the things i'm thinking about doing here this party spot i'm gonna build a copy of it maybe uh up over there we'll get rid of this one i am really thinking about getting rid of this is like a nice starting thing but it might be time for us to increase a little bit we do have a fair bit of bamboo we have some pretty nice stuff we can build as well this is a poor chair that's an excellent chair that's a normal chair let's actually deconstruct that one we're going to have to go in here and grab all of these things and deconstruct them. I want to upgrade the table. I just feel like doing it. Everything in here otherwise looks pretty nice. Oh, look at this. Everyone's out here. Rhino and the mango just decked out in the Hunoms. The Hunom leather. Don't care none. Actually, they care a little bit. Plus four, to be honest. Yeah, this is our last night at our, our original founding table, friends. And there it goes. Almost instantaneously, the entire thing ripped apart. I guess remember when I built that table 100 years ago? Let's put in now a bamboo Celtic table 3x2. Look how cool that guy looks. I'm gonna put that right in there. Then we're gonna do dining chairs since we have a lot more people here now. We're gonna do a full set of six of these. Just upgrade into full fancy. I could even add more over there, but this is too small of a room. We need to uh, we need to expand to a bigger room, to be honest. By the way, these things down here, these um, stone stone bills, I'm gonna actually increase these from do until a certain amount to just do forever. So essentially what happens is if anything gets hauled into the stockpile that's a stone, it will get chopped into bricks eventually. Uh, because these uh, bills are set to a really small area right around here. All I have to do to avoid chopping infinitely is just not have too many bricks. But what I've found is when I do want to build something, I usually want like 2,000 bricks out of nowhere. We're very close here, by the way, to researching. Then I'm going to make a decision on what kind of coolers I need and then decide on the park path. And then probably put a new floor in here because I got two different uh, wooden things, which is not very fancy. Well, we got a good table. Good, excellent, good. Oh, what was that? Cinnamon started a social fight with Iguatabi. What the heck is this about? Cinnamon... Cinnamon was asked by Iguatami to forgive her slight. Cinnamon agreed to let the slight go. Cinnamon was insulted by Iguatami like two seconds later. This dope, basically a naked dope wearing a hiding behind a face mask, was like, all right, uh, I'll forgive you, Cinnamon. Also, you suck. And Cinnamon's like, enough of this, punches. Let's see who wins. Woo, Cinnamon's got three bruises. However, he's already got four. That's five. Cinnam Whoa! Left fourth toe! Cinnamon, what? This guy just punched off your toe? Doesn't even seem legitimate. All right, who won the... Well, one, two, three, four, five, six bruises, and Cinnamon lost a toe there. This guy had seven bruises, though. So, I guess technically Iguatongbi actually wins. We'll have to see what his name becomes after the episode, then. Someone who can actually beat Cinnamon in a brawl? That is unheard of. By the way, doesn't this look so much better than the old one? Oh, you thought, well, Chaos doesn't think so. Instantly comes in here and gives Rhino the stumps down. Good chatter, normal chatter. That last one's a normal chatter. All right, I like that a lot better. I think it looks more fancy for sure. Oh, there's the research I've been waiting for forever. We got the air conditioning. Now, let's select a new research. I think we're just going to finish up machining for all these extra gates and whatnot. I think we're okay on the sewage treatment. 
Another thing I really want to do is move. Well, we're so close on this, only 500. I need to start moving towards the major research bench if I want to research all the dinosaur projects, apparently. So, let's take a look now at the hygiene mod. As far as I can see, it didn't add anything. Oh, here we go. It's down in hygiene miscellaneous. Aircon outdoor unit. This is 90 steel, three components. That's exactly what it was before uh, for one of these heaters. So that's no different whatsoever. Place outdoors and pipe to indoor units or freezer units. Power mode select with 100 to 1,000 cooling units capacity. So basically the same thing as the heater. And then over here, so we can, we can pump multiple air conditioners then. We have a walk-in freezer unit that can use up to 300 cooling. And then we have a regular unit that can do 100 cooling. So essentially we build one outdoor unit. Uh, that runs off the electricity that will produce probably a thousand cooling units capacity. And then we have a bunch of indoor units that are connected via our aircon pipe, which is a different different kind of pipe that requires steel. So this is definitely more efficient then. The only question is, can it go over the walls? Ah, well. I... I'm not sure <laughs> how that works exactly. All right, let's give it a whirl. This is a lot more steel efficient, and this will allow us the steel to put in the path, which I would love to do this episode. So we put an Aircon outdoor unit here. It is connected up. 90 steel, three components. Now, we're going to use the indoor things here. Let's see if we can get by with just one. We'll put it right there. We'll see how that works when we get rid of that one cooler. Uh, and then maybe I put another one up over here. And then let's pipe these guys together with the Aircon pipe, which I believe is going to have to go just like that. And that should connect them all up. We'll see in a minute when it gets put together. And here it goes. So the pipes are completely invisible. Although these ones seem to be visible for whatever. Oh no, because those just haven't been built yet. Now the main unit has been built here. Ah, okay. So the main unit Connected cooling, 100U, 50%. Cooling units, 100U, 200 watts. Efficiency, 100%. Power needed, 20 watts. Grid access, that's a lot of numbers. But it looks like down here that this is indeed working. So let's take this. Well, first of all, it's cold out. It's actually 62 Fahrenheit, 17 Celsius. So we don't really need it at all right now. But we can at least try to get rid of these guys and see how that's going to average out over time. The way this is set up. I bet this is obviously not going to be nearly cool enough. We're probably going to have to wait till next summer to really care about that. Because these aren't even going to turn on. It's actually colder in here at 61. And the target, these things run just like a normal cooler. So you can set their target. And then presumably... Presumably we can run 10 things off of this little guy here. But it's going to need to use a ton of power to actually do that if we actually want it to go all the way up that. So it says cooling units, 100 U per 200 watts. So if we want to cool with 10 of these uh, coolers in different rooms, we're going to need to draw 2,000 watts. But apparently, we can do that. All right, I think I understand. Whoa, 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 what's all this noise? I think someone's getting stuck somewhere trying to do something. Oh. No, I think that's just me making a ruckus. Guys, don't worry. Men at work here doing manly things. Fear ye not. I am working safely and appropriately. Oh, wait. That wasn't the noise. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that's all about. Prisoner rescue quest with a relationship. A prisoner being held by the Manic Partners has managed to steal a radio and call you. Igala is being held at a camp nearby under armed guard. Rescue him and he will join your colony. He's a 73-year-old uh, taster? Taster? Ta it must be taser. Tase taster? He says that two turrets, one mortar, and two enemies defend the site. Now, this is actually really important because one mortar 
And if do we still have that mission to go do the anti-grav warhead, we, that's one way we could get our defenses. And one thing I did want to do was defenses this time around. So we had 16 days. That's really close to we're here. That's over here. Uh, this is the outpost. 20 days. That gives us a marine armor. Where was the last one? The anti-grain warhead. Oh, I think it was actually a trade deal with nearby friends. But hell if I know which guys that was with. I think you have to click on the actual people. It's definitely not any of these guys. It's probably like way the heck up here. Yeah, up here. Bamboo. So if we bring them 820 bamboo, they'll give us an anti-grain warhead in 17 days. Technically, it's probably not that bad of a, a trek. Let's try to see what it looks like from here to here to there. That's going to be three days. But we're also in winter, so it might be a little bit slower than normal. And then all the way up to here only adds 2.4 days because most of it's along the road. So it's like a 10-day trek there and back. We could get a mortar. We could get uh, Iguatambi's father. And we could get an anti-grain warhead. Now that is a fascinating proposition. And I would like to do a little caravanning because along the way we could pick up some dinosaurs. Uh, it looks like we're a little bit light on them here. Act Ooh, more Diplo, Diplo Doofies came in. Oh, I really want to get them into the park. Problem is, these guys eat everything I own. I hate them so much. Juvenile male, get in the park. You, juvenile male. Actually, I want juvenile females if at all possible. I did see a lot of them. <gasps> Copybaras. Could we tame these guys and have them procreate en masse to feed all the all the carnivore dinosaurs? <laughs> this is so much fun. All right, um, let's find out. Male, male, age seven, age 10, age three. Male, age three, you're gonna have a fun time, friend. We'll get you in, we'll get this age two female. We'll get this age two female. We'll get this age two female. Yes, this is gonna go absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Now we already have a juvenile male over there. This is another male. How about you? You're a female. Egg progress. Beautiful. Let's tame you as well. We're just going to tame everything under the sun. And we're going to have a fun time doing it. The rest of these guys, I don't like them. We're going to hunt them because they're eating up all of our stuff all the time. I want to go on that. Uh, well, I don't know what this issue is. Over oh, it's Rhino. I see. Rhino is having... Yeah, I've had this actually happen in the Dwarf campaign before. Like, some sometimes this happens and I can't quite figure out like what to do about it. Maybe I could just have him shoot that thing. Yeah, I'm not sure. Well, if we're going to go do that quest, I need to go to tame dinosaurs, obviously. Zavoria needs to go because she can defend. Cinnamon kind of needs to go. And that le we could bring chaos as well, leaving Mango behind to hold down the fort with Rhino, Slurcy, and the soon-to-be renamed Iguatambi. It honestly would be a little bit of fun. We could come back with a whole legion of dinosaurs. We also could bring Elpo with us. Uh, if we tamed up eight before we left, which would take a, quite a bit of effort because we're busy doing a lot of other stuff right now, we could bring him as well. I don't know what to say about this rhino situation. I think eventually... Oh, there we go. 5% revenge. Wow. And he's going to come over here and go after rhino, which is actually might break him. Yes, there we go, rhino. Thank you. Get out and break out of your nonsense. Thank you, Cinnamon. And there we go, fixed. Awesome. We hunted the animal and fixed the bug. I have to come down here to like immediately. Smelting metal from slag. Yeah, I'm almost actually done that. In fact, there's only one more piece of slag left. That's amazing. There we go. Let's tame that guy. For whatever reason, already taming him. All right, perfect. Now, there was a cargo pod that, oh, not the cargo pod. There was this guy. This is a lot more um, slag, but that's all set to haul. We'll bring that down and melt that up as well. What are you doing? Stop eating our stuff. And then apparently this cooling system seems to be working. 74 outside, inside it's 69. So it's definitely running right now. Cooling usage 100. Cooling units power 100. This one over here also says cooling usage 100, but it's not doesn't seem to be actually working. I'm not sure. 75 outside. It's got to be working, actually. There's no other coolers in there. I wonder how well these things can function. I'm not sure. Let's find out, though, by putting in more air conditioners. I think we'll put another one right here. Uh, we could probably put one in the bathroom now as well. 
be a little bit awkward being underneath there, but we could put it down here. That'd be fine and dandy. Make sure we have pipes connecting these guys up. I don't think we'll see any of those things, so that should be fine, but we'll try to run them through the wall most of the time. Fantastic. Presumably that'll connect itself up down here. We're going to have yet another air conditioner unit. Awesome. I'm not sure if we really need to air condition the store, but we definitely need to air condition this room. I guess we can just put that right over the spot without even caring about it. Run this guy straight on down. Good. That should take care of literally every cooler in the entire base. I'm going to actually deconstruct them all now. And if we need more stuff in the future, we'll deal with it then. But that should be the entire base, except, of course, for this situation going on right here, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. How did I do with the Diplosaurus's? Uh, it looks like another one over here has come over to eat. Well, at least, the, at least we can bait them into our area. Looks like I must have failed on taming them both. Nope, I didn't. Come on. One more dinosaur for the park, friends. Yes, we got one. Look at this. Tame another one. Oh, it's amazing. Animals. Who the heck are even a Diplo doofus number one? Get into the Dino Phallus tank area, fan. We should probably rename that at this point. Am I going to go grab some corn and go after the other one? There, for whatever reason, the... The UI for this doesn't work very well anymore. It used to work perfectly forever. Let's see if I can get two of them. That would be incredible. Cinnamon's going to go hunt the other one. Stops eating our fruits and whatnot. Come on, 40% me. There it is. We have done it. We're going to have so many of these things. What is my Diplosaurus? Uh, El Numero Dos into the Dino Park. Now, one more thing I want to do. Let's open up Animal Handling. Let's look for me. I want to get Taming ahead of everything. We put that on a five. So I do it before smithing, tailoring, crafting. I think we're finally caught up on all that stuff. We have the gates and all everything put in. So this way I will actually come over here and work on getting the capybaras. And then hopefully we can get them in here to breed like the little rats that they are. Oh, is this the one Cin Cinnamon's hunting it into the, into the pen? But we need to put a real gate in here now, apparently, because what we have now isn't sufficient. See if I can't find some half-decent, like, uh, fences or something like that. Here we go. Dinosaur security fence gate. This will have to do. Let's make it out of slate, because that's basically all we have. This is not really what I want, but, I mean, it will... Suffice? I think we'll do, like, a triple door there. I'm not... A hun yeah, because this is the actual wall, so I think that'll work. It'll look, like, semi-viable. We'll find out in a second here as I... Look how fast I went to go put that... Oh, there we go. Yeah, that looks... I guess. It's fun. Oh, you know what? I really desperately, desperately want to do this episode. Oh, there's so many things... Oh, I think the episode's over, though. Oh, there's so many things, though. This is what I want to do, and I'm really excited about it. Slate, torch, braziers. I want to put these in. They're electric, mind you. They have fires. Oh, it's going to be... You know what? Can I just at least put two of them in right now? I'm going to have to move this gate later. It looks so stupid the way it is. Uh, however, let's come down here to power and make sure the power conduit is at least running all the way up. Beautiful. So what I want to do is put in all the path here using the Jurassic... Uh, probably the paved floor, and then on either side, line it with fire torches. Oh, it's going to look beautiful. Uh, we can have, like, little uh, places we can stop and rest and have some trees and whatnot. I successfully tamed a capybara. I have named him what is happening today. We went from zero animals to five billion capybara into the dino area. Fantastic, friends. We're definitely going on that caravan now. I'm feeling good about this. We get another man. Iguatomi. Maybe he'll maybe he won't like kill Cinnamon's toe anymore if he feels more like he's part of the colony. One thing I absolutely have to do is see this thing get put together here with Slurcy. That or myself. I'm playing horseshoes. Now let's me have me come up here and build this one thing. I want a priority really quick. And there it is. It's not quite. Wait, wait, wait. There. Wait. Is that not connected? 
Well, that might not be connected to the power because we don't have enough. Yeah, it's connected. It just hasn't. There it is, friends. Welcome to the park. It looks so great. Woo. All right. Well, that's the episode. I was a little, um, a little fluttery this time. I was trying to figure out how this aviary worked. Actually, I had to alt tab and look around a little bit, try to make sure I had it set up right. I do have it set up right now. It's kind of cool. What it needs is a torch inside, though. We'll get on that. That probably looks amazing when it's lit up from the inside with torches, I bet. Uh, we need to put the paths in. We need to get these um, braziers, the electricity running around there. We did finally get rid of our wooden coolers. And as far as I can tell, these things are all on. Uh, now, I don't know exactly how much they're using. But it is also cold out. It's actually 51 Fahrenheit, 11 Celsius. Now, we don't have any heaters anywhere. Who is this guy? Diplosaurus 1. Buddy, Diplosaurus 1, you're, you're not supposed to be... Oh, that's just a random piece of tile. The only piece of tile he could have... Apparently, it's one single tile in the zone. I didn't realize that. All right. There we go. You can come back over here. Never would have noticed that if he wasn't randomly sleeping there inside of it. But looking at the cooler over here, which hopefully doesn't break in the rain. Connected cooling, 100U, 16.67%. Yeah, we're barely using it. I guess once it gets hot, we'll see what really happens with this. We may need to put in more, but it's a relatively simple task of just adding more pipes and more air cons here and there. Kind of like it. It almost looks like they blend right in. Pretty cool. And then we did get rid of all of our uh, steel down here. That's taken care of. We got a whole bunch more blocks coming along. Clothes are coming along. Deterioration of stuff. It's always an issue because it's constantly raining here. Just make sure I got all the deterioration that I can see. Yep, that's everything. And then it's just tattered apparel, and even that seems to be going down a little bit. So we got cinnamon, mango, me, chaos. So let's check cinnamon first. It's just a shirt. Mango, just a shirt. Me, just a shirt. Chaos, just the shirt. Now, Chaos is not a Hunamer. So, but however, we have a nice uh, dinosaur hard skin shirt for him right there. So one thing I could do if I really wanted to, and it wouldn't take very long, is just shut off in the um, restriction profile the ability to wear those shirts, which I actually, you know, I want to do it because I'm a little annoyed by that thing not going away sooner. It'll go away on its own eventually. But let's just select the anything outfit. Uh, we're going to look here for... Hmm. Oh, we can't do it by a certain kind of shirt. Ah, well, this is what we can do. We can restrict the quality to 51%. I don't normally do this because the game does this automatically, but for synth thread shirts or whatever they are, the blue ones, it gives them a higher rating because they're really good. Higher rating than normal. So usually most, most normal shirts you'll get rid of at 51%. But the synth thread ones you'll actually wear down to like 20 or 30 for whatever reason. So if I do this, everyone should get rid of those things. By the way, Zavoria and Chaos have forced items, but that's only going to be... Uh, that's all of their gear you can see here. Yeah, that's just all of their fighting gear. So this should very quickly mean that everyone drops off all those terrible shirts, and we crank out new ones almost instantaneously. Monkey Slate became the target of... Argh, stupid Cobras! Hate these things. All right, when's we returning? We killed the Cobra... We go on a quest of enormous importance. We put in the, the pathways. We light the pathways. We get the aviary a little bit lit up as well. Uh, we get our Dillosauruses. I don't know where I'm going to stick them yet. I don't know. Should I put them over here on the side? Should I start making areas yet? Or should I just get everybody into the one big zone for now? Probably just the one big zone. I hope this works and people can't freely roam in and out. But I really don't know. It looks acceptable, I suppose. Uh, we got some more guys over here. Chaos is cooking up the meals. We got a nice brand new table today as well. A floor in here. Wow, these goes up. These go up to 67 at least, which means this has to be at least 150 then, because we can stack 75, 75 there. We'll just cook through that stuff like absolute madmen. Another thing I probably want to do is, as much as I like this cool little stove, we should probably get an electric one because it'll cook a lot faster. Oh, there's cinnamon taking off her shirt. Beautiful. Yep, everyone's just depositing their shirts in here, which means they're going to start grabbing the new shirts pretty soon. And then we'll get rid of that tattered apparel in no time. Except for Chaos, who's got an old flak jacket. And we're just about done machining. What a mouthful. Today has been a historic day, friends. 
Ooh, and we even mined 637 gold. We could make royal beds. Woo. All right, well, the future holds many bright things. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Warriors over here in case this goes horrifically awry. Can I tame the pterodon with insect meat? <gasps> Friends, we have done it. We have our first dinosaur, a pterodon, the most vicious creature in all the lands. Fantastic. Let's get him into the dino phallus tank area. Amazing. Now, how are we going to feed him? 